Oh, we're having a very interesting conversation this morning on Sunrise Daily. We have two gentlemen here from the National Assembly. Uh, Honorable Rima Shawulu is a Chairman House Committee on Defense, a member of the PDP. Um, Oh, of, on the Army, beg your pardon, Chairman House Committee on Army. He's a member of the PDP. And we also have with us Honorable Yunus Abubakar, who is a member of the All Progressives Congress and also the Chairman House Committee on the FRSC. Now, gentlemen, I, I was observing just before we went on break that both of you seem to be singing from the same hymn sheet. And I was asking you just before we went on break how you are going to deal with the pressure coming from your political party. You just heard there uh, the chairman of the APC who is insisting that the Senate president must resign or be impeached. He says it's going to happen lawfully. He doesn't look, uh, from what we've seen, I mean, the, the Senate president has retorted that it, it can happen. If you have 73 members today, you know, he's more than willing to step down. But it doesn't look, I mean, we don't know how that is going to happen. We, don't, we still don't know what is going to play out. But I'd like you to react first and foremost to what he said so far, um, Honorable Abu Bakar. Yeah, my Robert uh, Chairman, uh, Comrade Adam Oshimole, a former governor, has indeed said it. He has charged us members of the APC that that is what he wants. And as a party, they want us to see the Senate president impeach. Fine. This is, he has now charged us. It's left for us. Since he has already even added a caveat, it should be within the norms, within the confine of the laws. Then definitely, we have taken his call as our leader, as a party chairman. Now we will come and convene with our leaders, I mean like the majority, senior majority leader and all the party caucuses. We will now sit and see how we can go about it. If we made a headway, we report back to him. If we don't, we tell him the obstacles that we are having. And probably he has a magic that he's going to give us. This is also considering the fact that you already said that the rules do not speculate or stipulate that the leadership of the National Assembly must come from within a certain party or from the majority That's party. That's what I'm saying. You have said that already. Yeah. You, you said you have to educate the leadership on that. Aren't they that aware? That's what that I'm that telling is, you. There, are, are, there are so many ways. What a miracle can happen that we have some members of the PDP who might dislike uh, Bukola Saraki and they might team up with the APC to remove him to have the 73. It can happen. But probably, you know, the PDP too can chat their members to remain within the divide so that to make it an impossibility to the APC. It's about politicking, maneuvering, lobbying, the Chinese talk, and how you go about doing things. Probably our party has a magic, which I cannot say in the air. How much of that influence, <laughs> it's interesting you say it has magic that you cannot see in there, but how much of that influence, how much of this pressure is going to be playing on, you know, the National Assembly's resumption or the National Assembly's agenda when you finally resume? I don't think it will have any effect. It has been having so many effects. We have been having some calls, just like the PDP now calling upon the leadership of the National Assembly to do this because they have one added advantage. The same thing, all parties are calling. But you see, those calling aside, we might not descend into anarchy by compromising the law. Just like we say it, and everybody agreed that the parliament, the legislative arm of government, is the only symbol of democracy. So we cannot be a party to eroding that, I mean, the milestone we have achieved so far in Nigeria by, because of some wishful and then personal interest that will override the national interest to derode and then erode completely the symbol of democracy that we have achieved. 73 is the figure that, you know, people argue you need to impeach the yes, two speech. thirds. Is that, two is, that, thirds. is that correct? Yeah. Because some people have also argued that it's only the two thirds of those who are present in the mm. chambers on that day. No, 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 no. You don't agree? Yeah. You don't agree? That's either. not our law. The, the, law, the, rule the law says is of it. members. It didn't of say members. of those present and voting. Yes. Because those present and voting by our rules uh, is one third. Mm. The, so, a quorum is one third. A quorum so you one third of the members. So for impeachment, you insist that you need two thirds of it's all not, the it, members. There is the rules. Yeah, that that rule. has been there since 1999. Is that, that the rules changed. of the constitution? Which one of them? Is is the rules? Is, is the rules? Well, the constitution. I, I can't remember the, the section. The constitution, of the constitution did section not. 50. Section 50. Subsection C. Yeah. It has given us the mandate to really do this impeachment process. I mean, to comment. But then two thirds of the members. 
we need to start. In electing the presiding officers, we need a simple majority, even if it is by one vote mm. in the divide. We have 50, I mean, one owner and senators. If 55 voted against 54, the person that scored that 55 vote becomes the Senate president. We, we, so the issue here is that you need, while you need a simple majority to elect, you need to third of the members to I mean, oh, Honorable Shawulu, you had already also said that it's going to be difficult. Uh, I mean, you talked about the rules that are guiding declaring seats vacant, even though this is what the RAPC, I think it's very important to say where the call is coming from. The RAPC is saying that, you know, the seat of, uh, of uh, Senator Fabio should be declared vacant. You said there are rules guiding the process. Do you want to quickly put us through those rules and why it might be difficult for the Senate President to just do that unilaterally? Yeah, uh, you see, we work on precedents. At the time that some people come from uh, PDP. PDP to APC, uh, there was no rift in the PDP. Their seats were not declared vacant. vacant. So if you are working on precedence and you cannot come, therefore come, so and then nation. declare some other seats vacant. So the point really is that declaring seats vacant I think if I read the minds of uh, the political leadership, it's a response to uh, this tit for tat. You said this, I said this. Mm -hmm. But I do know from the bottom of my heart, from uh, the leadership of the PDP is desirous of stability in the whole country. Because if there's no stability in the country, you cannot have election the way you want it to be held. You want elections where people can freely go to vote. You want elections where... Uh, you won't have too much of security presence because we think that the hype, the tension that is being generated is just a ploy to deploy security and uh, influence the outcome of the election. Uh, so we want as much as possible to have an election the way it happened in Ghana, the way it happened in other South Africa, the way it's happened in other parts of the world. Honorable Shawulu, is it not a, a kind of a sad commentary on the state of affairs in the country that uh, you know, you're referring to a precedent uh, in which even if the, by, on the basis of the Constitution a defection is illegal, uh, that essentially the uh, prescribed consequence for an illegal defection is not being carried out. And, and you're citing it as a precedent, but in actuality it's just a non-adherence to the rule of law. Uh, I, I want to ask you, is, is it not troubling to you that regardless of PDP or APC or whose ox is gored, that this is the reality and it's essentially just being justified here? Well, I, I would have wished that, that what you are saying were actually what we are practicing. Uh, I would have wished. But I told you about the amendment to the Constitution. There's a, a provision in the Constitution, sorry I didn't come with it, which I would have called your attention to. Even when you have done all that, you still need a resolution of the House or the Senate or of the State call. House of Assembly, whichever applies to effect the removal of somebody from the chambers. That is, is there in the Constitution. I, I don't have it, I will, I will have read next time I, I, I can get it for you. So all the debate, you know, I come from the PDP where they was affected at a certain stage with the girl of uh, defections. And we kept, we even staged a walkout of the, uh, out of the, the chambers of the House of Representatives. And then at one of them, the speaker took his time to go through the, the constitution. Even though the constitution says this, it also has a, prov a, prov a, prov a, prov a proviso that this is how it should be implemented. The implementation will require a resolution of the house. That's even, that's, even the, that's even kind of, let's just call it the third level. Uh, getting even past the second level is what I'm referring to. Look at the recent scenario in which you have a PDP senator, Senator Hope Uzodema of Imo State, moving over from the PDP to the APC. He sends a letter of defection to the, to the Senate president. The Senate president reads the 14 or so uh, letters of those defecting from the APC to the PDP, but does not read... Uh, the defection letter in the opposite direction. And we've seen this as a, a kind of a trend running through the, the history of the National Assembly since 1999. It, getting past that second level, though, even to get to the third level, 
how do you get to that point if you have this open selectivity, very blatant selectivity in terms of which defections will be recognized and which defections will not? Well, the fact of the matter is that at the end of the day, the defection is at the local level. It's a choice. You cannot stop anyone from moving from the party that he wants. It's there in the Constitution. So nobody can be stopped. The announcements on the floor of the House a political event, mm. essentially. And then, let me add quickly, just a few seconds. You see, when we talk of procedural kind of a thing, you know, we have a yardstick. We are talking about the stability of democracy, which the parliament is a paramount symbol. Now, just like we said, the principal or the presiding officer speaker or the senate making a declaration of an ordinary floor, not ordinary, a floor member with that occupy, uh, in the principal body of principal officers. Mm. The procedure, like we said, is cumbersome. What will come after it might really destabilize the stability, we are, the relative stability we are enjoying. So in the interest of that stability and in the override interest of the nation and the democracy we are practicing, there are certain things that a leader must use his wisdom to skip it because of the overriding interest and the following consequences negatively that will come up. And I think this is what the leaders are really avoiding when we say there is a convention that's a president. This is what they are looking into. The aftermath of what will come after that mere declaration will give bound to, I mean, it's a kind of, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but definitely we might not be able to and contain it, and it might, I mean, I don't know, I don't know. Well, okay. you must have known, <laughs> of course, that uh, the, in the girl of the campaigns that we had, in the lab, we have people going to APC, from PDP to APC, and back to PDP within the legislative session.